Hey everyone and welcome to another painting video. In this video I show you the process of my newest watercolor and color pencils painting. This original watercolor painting will be available for sale next week February the 25th on Monday at 5 pm Eastern time at the Bad Apple Artist Collective auction on Facebook. For more info about how to participate in the auction please check the video description. The theme for this month's auction was Gothic versus Art Nouveau and oh my goodness I absolutely adore both of these themes. I just love Art Nouveau and I have created several pieces that are inspired by this style and I really love Gothic art and the Gothic Lolita style. I just find it super inspiring. So instead of picking just one of the two themes, I just did both. So I included Art Nouveau style elements and the figure in my painting is a Gothic Lolita girl. This painting is very different from pretty much all my other paintings that I usually create. The biggest difference is that I didn't create a Photoshop reference, which I do for almost all my paintings. Instead, I wanted to create a drawing, but without having a strict Photoshop reference. When I do a drawing, I am more free to make a more dynamic posture and to work with all the elements in a freer and more fluent way than I would be able to do it in Photoshop. In Photoshop I'm only able to move and position all the elements around and maybe change the size and the colors but when I draw I can create everything I want basically and for this painting I wanted to be free and create something really imaginative and different than my other paintings. And I'm very happy with the outcome. So let me tell you how I went about creating this piece. So at first I created a drawing on a A3 paper. This is a size that we use in Europe and I recently bought a stack of A3 printer paper for my larger printer and also just to create sketches on it because I always run out of paper. And believe it or not, even with this bigger size, I managed to start my drawing too far on the left side of the paper and I ran out of paper. It's ridiculous. But anyways, <laughs> if you are wondering what materials I use and also what tools I use to create my artwork like this light box, just check the video description. I have listed all materials with links where to purchase them. Creating the drawing took me a couple of hours. Probably I used 20 or 30 reference pictures to create the posture and the individual elements of the drawing. Like I had a different reference picture for both of the arms, for the face, for the hair, for the clothing, for the flowers, for the frames and for the Art Nouveau elements. After having finished the drawing I scanned it and opened it in Photoshop. Then came another very difficult part for me which was the coloring process. I am not very good with colors actually. Um, all the paintings that I create take literally hours for me to find the right colors for them. In my Photoshop reference I play around with the color picker and the saturation tool and all the different adjustment layers that Photoshop offers and with these tools I can create color compositions that I like. But for this painting I didn't have a Photoshop mock-up which I could alter until it had the right color composition. So I had to color my full drawing in Photoshop and create different layers for the different parts of the painting and change the colors until I was happy with the result. I ended up having two different versions, one with the model having blue hair and one with the model having yellow hair and I decided for the blue haired girl because I think she looks just so modern and kind of sci-fi like that I I really adored this version more. The preparation part took me at least probably a day. So this was a lot of work just for the preparations. But then I wasn't finished yet. I still had to transfer my drawing onto my watercolor paper. And I completely changed my materials. For the watercolor paper, this time I used a cold press watercolor paper, 300 grams from Arches, which has a very rough surface and it allows me to make super perfect gradients. I love Fabriano paper and hot pressed paper for all my paintings that should look a little bit more realistically and on which I use a lot of color pencils. But for this painting, I wanted to have those perfect even gradients 
and I know that this is not really possible on Fabriano paper. I also made some tests with the paper before I started my real artwork because otherwise I would have probably ruined it. Glad I did that because on my test paper I totally messed up the face. I immediately noticed some differences compared to the Fabriano paper. For example on the arches paper the water stays longer wet than on the Fabriano paper. I had to use a lot more water for my whole process so that was one of the adjustments I had to make. Then I transferred my sketch onto the watercolor paper with the help of the light box. I ordered the light box one day before I did the sketch and I was so glad that it arrived and I am so excited seriously about this light box. I always thought that I wouldn't need one but I didn't want to use transfer paper for this sketch because I wouldn't be able to make a very accurate sketch just with the graphite transfer paper so I had to use the light box and also with the light box I could do my sketch with color pencils and for a very delicate and rather light watercolor painting the lines would be too dark for my taste and I didn't want that so I bought the light box. The R3 light box only cost me 50 euros which for this size is very affordable. I have looked for light boxes at Bösner in Germany and they start I think at 80 euros which is super overpriced in my opinion so I was extremely happy that I found this light box on Amazon and the cool thing is it has three different light options it's extremely thin and lightweight I'm just in love with this light box <laughs> I also have a link of it in the description of the video it's also available in a smaller variant for me I just went with the larger size because I know that I will regret if I don't buy the larger one because there will be a time that I will do a larger painting and for this painting it already was large and it fit on the light box perfectly. Okay enough of that. After having finished the drawing I could finally start with the painting process. I started by filling in the face with a light variant of her skin color. With this kind of paper I noticed that you have more time to fill in an area before the water dries which I found very helpful but you need a lot of water. So I mixed like plenty of water only with a little bit amount of paint and filled in the face portion. Then I mixed a rose tone for her cheeks and a greenish shadow tone for her eyeshadow and the shadows around her eyes. And for the hand and her neck I actually went a little bit too dark but luckily with this paper I'm able to lift off almost all the paint when it's wet. So it's super easy when you make a mistake and it's still wet you can pretty much lift off a large amount of the paint again. So I found this very helpful. And because because the paper took so long to dry I used the remaining time to just fill out some of the base colors of the composition. I started with the frame around the figure which I assigned a pinkish rose color to in my Photoshop composition and this was so helpful like being confident about what colors I would use for my painting was extremely helpful. This way I could concentrate completely on how the color would look on my painting and how the watercolor effects would generate on the painting. Although I had the Photoshop composition, obviously I didn't want my painting to look exactly like this messy thing that I created. So instead of following this strictly without thinking, I mixed the colors in a very light variant and while I applied them to the paper, I also tried to alter them a little bit. So for example for the rose stone I would add a little bit of ochre or a little bit of magenta to just change it. Then I just randomly started at one part of the painting and decided to begin with painting the lace. For the lace I try to leave those spots open that are white on my reference photo and everything that has a skin tone or has a shadow I added watercolor on. Because the patterns were so intricate and difficult I also planned on using gouache later on in the process to add more details to the fabric. I really like how her sleeve turned out and this was actually the easiest thing. It kind of accidentally happened. So there were so many folds in this sleeve that I found it super difficult and I just let some of the areas white and didn't touch them and this way I could generate an illusion of folds and overlapping cloth 
on the sleeve. And having all the reference photos neatly sorted into one folder really helped me out coloring this painting. Then I just moved on with adding all the base colors to my composition. I had a lot of reds and pinks and yellows. Then I filled in the beautiful color of her hair. The hair for me is really the balance for all the warm reds in the painting and this beautiful blue really makes me so happy. To balance off the rest of the warm tones I chose to give the butterflies a turquoise color and also the leaves of the roses are turquoise as well. The blue that I mixed for the hair is a mixture between ultramarine blue from Schmincke and ultramarine blue that is handmade from a little Etsy shop that I will also link in the description of the video. I really love this blue. It's rather expensive because it's handmade, but I have never found a blue like that and I just really love it. Then came the absolutely terrifying part of the painting for me because I had no experience with this paper. I didn't exactly know if I would be able to get the face right and I was terrified that I might ruin it. So I was really really careful and I added a little bit less layers because I didn't want the face to have any abstract edges in it. I wanted it to be very smooth and having only even gradients. For the face as well I used a reference picture so I didn't made the shadows and the colors up but I completely changed the features of the face. Having a photo reference as a base for your shades and coloring is super helpful and for me it always makes my artwork better. Then I just added more details to the face and increased the shadows and the dark areas at the edges of the face and I also used a small brush to work on the details on her eyes and the eyebrows and I also gave her those beautiful pink eyes that I really love. Then I added the shades in her hair. For this I just imagine how the hair would fall. I had some references but I just made those curls up and hoped that it would look good. Then I painted the flowers around her head and after having filled in the major colors I felt they weren't very three-dimensional so I decided to use my gouache flower painting technique to add some petals and to just make them stand out a bit and I really liked how that turned out. Then I worked on the first rose and I painted those roses differently than I would paint them on my other paintings. I didn't want to paint the roses in my usual abstract style which might have interrupted the whole composition of the painting. Also I felt the surface of the paper wasn't the best surface for my technique because it was very rough and the gouache that I used to paint roses didn't really stick very well to the paper, <laughs> I don't know. But um, yeah, I felt painting those roses in a less abstract style would fit the painting better. And then I just continued with filling in the Art Nouveau style elements of the composition and and I didn't record much of it because I pretty much just colored all the lines and patterns and it was a rather repetitive work and also I had to turn my painting all the time in order to make clear lines and this would just have made you dizzy. <laughs> then I continued with working on the lace which was a lot of work but very satisfying actually. I used darker colors to indicate folds and shadows and everything that was white I would just not touch and then in the end I used white gouache to just correct those little mistakes and add more of the detailed and intricate pattern. And this worked out really well. I use gouache from Lascaux in a larger bottle and the consistency is very fluid which I find super helpful. I don't have to add a lot of water to it. I can just use it right from the tube. And for every little thing of her outfit I had a reference photo. So when I would paint on the bow I had a different reference photo for the bow but it had obviously a different color because I used completely different colors. I always had to check my color composition and then my reference photo and both combine it in my head, which I'm not used to do. <laughs> so it was confusing, but luckily it worked out. And my last steps of the painting were just refining borders. I would just see, okay, which borders are a little bit wobbly, where could I add more shadows, 
which areas could I make a little bit more refined than the other ones and I would add some contours here and there but because I had some experience with my previous Art Nouveau pieces I learned that adding contours everywhere doesn't make my art better so I didn't do it and I was happy about it. <laughs> it really depends so I have seen like tons of artworks where you have contours on every element of the painting and it looks amazing but for some reason not in my artwork and I only added contours on some areas of the painting instead I would enhance the borders of my artwork for example I would say okay here we have a shadow and the contrast is on the other side for example where the hair meets the outfit then you have a shadow under the curl for example but I wouldn't add a contour around the curl instead I would just work on the shadow if that makes sense it's a little bit complicated to explain yeah so this is my artwork I am extremely happy with how she turned out I'm really in love with her however I don't have a name for her yet or a title I was just so focused on creating this beautiful gothic lolita girl and I wish to have a Japanese title for her I think or maybe there's a Korean gothic lolita scene too or a French word too I think an Asian or a French title would probably both fit equally well. If you have any ideas for title suggestions, please leave them in the comment section. I'm excited to see what your ideas are. And if you're interested in adopting her, again, I have all info down in the description for you. And I hope you liked the video and you found it helpful. It is always wonderful to read all your comments. I just wanted to thank you. You really make my day. I hope you are inspired and I see you in the next one. Bye bye.